For more on the French election, we are joined in our Beijing studio here in Beijing, Cui Hongjian, Director of the Department for European Studies at the China Institute of International Studies. Welcome back, sir. In Paris, we are joined by Ms. Hélène Convey Mouhe, who is a member of the French Senate. And also in Nantes, uh, in France, we have uh, uh, Yves Bascou, who is the Director of Migration and Mobility Policies at the European Policy Center. Welcome to the three of you. In fact, I should say, what a great reunion again. Remember last time we talked about the French uh, election, yeah. only a few days uh, from now, but things have changed. So what is your latest assessment about who will be that one seems to be winning a bigger hand, Ms. Gonvey Mouhe? Well, I'm, I'm not too sure that we have uh, moved on so, uh, so far. Um, <laughs> I think we still need to be a fortune teller to uh, know who will actually come out um, next Sunday um, ahead. We have four contenders and uh, we can have um, at the moment either a combination of, uh, of two coming out. The polls um, are, as we know, uh, not reliable or 100 percent. Mm. We know that they were wrong for the Brexit and for the election of Mr. Trump. And they have four candidates um, within one or two percent. And given that the um, error um, uh, margin can be of two percent, um, anything can happen. So right. I'm afraid that um, we're still in the same position as we were in our last discussions, well, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. Mr. Mascou, there has been complaints from coming from uh, the Macron uh, campaign suggesting there has been fake news against him and we saw him over the past few days going to the press trying to explain his links with Wall Street with the financial sector uh, much impact this will have on his uh, performance for example during the first round of voting <coughs> Well, he has already tried to uh, dismiss uh, all this myth and has said that some fake news will be coming out and we will pop, will pop out, pop up, sorry, uh, in, the, in the course of this last week. So uh, we have seen that some newspapers have also demonstrated that some fake news are now ongoing and this is the, the role of his uh, team to, uh, to say that this is not true and he has started to do so. Mm. Is that going to be a big headache for him, Ms. Conway Mouhe? And may I go back to you for Mr. Macron uh, in the final stage leading to the first round? Well, it's, uh, the last few days are just so important for the candidates. Mm. Uh, we know that a lot of people have not decided and that a lot of them will actually decide when they're putting their um, vote um, into the box. Um, it will be a kind of last minute choice. So anything that is happening this week is absolutely crucial for all the candidates. And indeed, if there are fake news, they need to be opposed by the yeah. candidates. And um, also they need to push forward what they believe will be convincing the electorate. Mm. We all understand, Mr. Basco, this is uh, the first round yearly in French election. It's what they call the protest vote meaning people just want to have their air out. They want to show their attitude and toward the politicians and what is going on wrong in their country. Uh, do you think this one, Mr. Pascu, will once again be a very strong protest vote? Uh, well, I think that we have to take into consideration that this is some sort of a, an unprecedented election where we have a series of new elements taking place. First, the fact that the president does not compete for his succession. This is a very, and this is a major point into the fifth republic. Mm -hmm. Second, the fact that uh, the, the primaries have also taken a big part into the election, which has been now a long-standing election for more than, uh, than one year. And last but not least, we have uh, an election which is not a division between the socialists and the conservatives, mm. which, which is more uh, an, an opposition between the populists and the reformists. And here we have some sort of a balance in the two. So is it a protest? I am not entirely sure, but there is some sort of protest which is now taking the mm. stand.
On the one hand, people are talking about the protest vote or not. On the other hand, Mr. Tsui, people are also talking about whether it is so-called extreme right or extreme left. Mm -hmm. uh, on many of the policies, actually, they are quite close to one another when it comes to these dances. So is it a, just an apparent drama mm -hmm. that is going on before mm -hmm. the election? Or actually, there are some real in-depth differences there that is likely to be unavoidable once the person being elected to come into power. Yes, also we, especially if you have a, a perspective from the mainstream party. It looks like a far-right uh, uh, party already, uh, already uh, get uh, its existence. But now how about the far left? Mm. Because now the question is, once uh, Marianne Pang uh, entered into the second round, perhaps the support to the far left will go will uh, transfer to uh, far right. Because as, I, as we understand it, especially for the average right. people, they, they will not take care of the small differences between far right and far left. Well, really, Ms. Conway Muhe, uh, once again, it seems that Mr. Tsui is trying to argue about a very much a protest vote for the first round, and uh, people just want to express their opinions and be different for the first round. Ms. Conway Muhe, is that likely to be the case, given your experiences? Well, as I say, it's difficult to, um, to say um, because in 2002, there was a protest vote and uh, we know that um, Madame Le Pen's father um, came to the second round and it was an absolute shock to the country to feel that the extreme right to actually qualify. Now, unfortunately, everybody kind of agrees that she's going to be in the second round uh, and it's almost an anticipation that she will be there because all the other candidates, um, according to the polls, will actually beat her. Mm -hmm. So there is a kind of a race among the other candidates to be against her, to be assured of a victory. And I think this is very sad because I think the image of France is, is really badly damaged by the fact that the extreme right can actually qualify in a country such as France with what it is defending and promoting, that is racism, it's a nationalist um, party that is uh, promoting uh, the closure of um, borders, mm -hmm. um, um, which is anti-immigration, anti-refugees, which has an economic program which goes against anything uh, that is actually needed for France today. And yeah. indeed, 25 Nobel Prizes um, have actually uh, published a tribune today to explain how badly uh, the, the program of Madame Le Pen will actually damage the French economy. So, you know, um, uh, mm, sorry. But you know, Miss Conway, people might say, well, you're just one of those elites. You don't see the voices, so called, of the silent majority, as they argue during the US presidential election. Miss Conway, will we briefly no, respond? No, I, I am not. No, 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 I am not. I am not part of the elite. I have, I have been elected to represent the people who believe I I in me and <laughs> for whom I am a voice. And it's not my personal uh, opinion, it's mm -hmm. what I defend, which is also the expression of what the people who have elected me to stand in the Senate believe in. If they don't believe in what I promote and right. what I share with them, they will elect somebody else. So I'm but not this part is, of an elite this is the at issue. all. I this is that. the issue, isn't it? I mean, Mr. Basgu, that there has been quite a division within your country, France, about what to do about France's future, what is more related to the European Union, and also whether it's as open or even more than before to people from outside the country. Uh, is that going to be, Mr. Bascou, at this point when you see it, the real defining issue in this election? Uh, to a certain extent, yes, because I think that the main defining issue <laughs> is the opposition we are having today between the populists, those who want to withdraw from globalization yeah. or want to reform it, but in a very strong manner, and the reformists, i.e. those who want to stay in the globalization phenomenon, and that those who understand that we can change the things, but f within the mechanism and here there is a clear opposition now going back to what has been said before it is absolutely true that there is a big gap between the far right and the far left on the question of immigration one far right is 
fundamentally opposed to any kind of migration yeah. and far left is fundamentally open to migration. But on Europe, I think that there is a clear difference. Uh, far right parties are what we can say europhobic. They don't like Europe and they don't want to remain into the European Union. Far left has a different stand on this. They do not like the European Union as it is today and they want to change it. And mm. if they are not able to change it, then they are going to raise the issue as to whether we stay in or do we pull out. And there is a clear uh, distinction here. That's right. But you see these days there has been so much going on inside the European politics. Netherlands just had its election, not really going to the far right, unlike many of the media reports earlier suggested. And then there's also the early election of the UK right after the French election because of its agenda of Brexit. So between all of this, and of course later the Germany election, between all of these, where, how would that in, in a way impact on the French voters when they cast their vote in the polls? Uh, Ms. Conway Mouhi. Uh. Well, I actually, um, it's, it's, it's an excellent question that you're asking because I regret personally that international affairs and European affairs are not part of the debate at all. It's a very Franco-French debate as to what is being proposed for the French people um, you know, on social issues. Why not, do you think, Ms. Kamel Why not? Why not? I mean, why not, but, but, I mean uh, why not do you think uh, the European topics is not being included in the overall debate? People are just not interested? Or, uh, you know, candidates don't want to get into trouble? Well, uh, it, it, mm. Well, first of all, uh, I suppose the candidates wants to prove what they can bring uh, to uh, people's daily life and how they're going to bring yeah. changes to, um, you know, what people actually want out of that. But there is no space left for a debate on European issues and international issues. And it's as if France is totally isolated in the world, which it is not. Um, whatever is happening in Syria today or um, the tensions between the US and North Korea, for instance, I mean, this is part also of, of what we should be concerned about mm. um, with France diplomatic um, you know, influence and, and so on. And yet it is not being touched upon, maybe because people are yeah. feel that it's far, uh, far fetched from their daily concerns. But also, I think it's the duty of politicians to actually bring uh, this global vision and, and, and express it as to what a French president will actually stand for in a world today well, that has a lot of political tensions, that has a lot of wars, and where France also are, plays a are. role. I mean, it, this Mi is Mr. not Mr. just Tse. somebody who is maintaining or looking after a company, you know? Yeah, yeah that's right. It's, it's true. Uh, Mr. Tay, what do you think among all of these elections? All of these elections has agenda about break away from the European Union mm. or not. Uh, Netherlands? coming up with the UK. Uh, will that have an impact, do you think, on the French voters? Yes, I think that uh, uh, it's understandable, I mean, for uh, French people, for other European uh, people, they will focus on some internal or domestic affairs during the election sure. campaign, campaign. But uh, now the question is, we are living in a globalized and a high uh, and a mutual uh, you know, uh, uh, interdependency world. So we need to take care of this uh, spill over effect of this, all of this uh, uh, po uh, political event. Even for this uh, moment, I mean, for this uh, French uh, election, I mean, especially from a Chinese uh, perspective or even from other uh, European uh, perspective, we can find out, uh, yes, why we take so, uh, so much I mean, attention on right. it is because no matter which kind of uh, domestic policy uh, will, take, um, will be taken by, by the new president, certainly it will give a very, very direct impact on the firstly European Union and the European integration and the other partners uh, of course, China. But also at the time when we are going to the polls, I mean the voters, uh, will the other elections in the Netherlands yeah. earlier and the coming up early election likely to take place in the UK because it still needs a parliamentary approval. So will those these decisions have much impact on the French voters. What do you think, very briefly? Yes, I think that uh, firstly it will give a very, very uh, uh, clear message to these uh, uh, voters in France, especially from uh, the Netherlands election, or perhaps uh, after the election in France, 
and especially for the far right when our party in Germany, they will try to interpret some message from this result mm. of election. So that's the reason why, because we, are, we should not forget the, the situation, that yeah. the European integration, that's which true. means the inter-influence between different countries. What about that spillover effect, Mr. Basku? Uh, Mr. Tui talked about that the earlier elections in the Netherlands and also early election likely in the UK, will that have much impact on French voters' mentality? Uh, I'm not that sure because as it has been said just before, mm -hmm. uh, the campaign has been overly a French campaign with very little attention on Europe and very little attention on foreign policy. But there are two ways of seeing the French campaign right now. Uh, the first one is to say, well, after Brexit and Trump, now France is going to be the next one on the, on the list to have uh, a far right or uh, a, populist, uh, a populist leader being elected. That's the first face of the coin. The other face is that it may also be the case that after Austria, the Netherlands, France will also show that extreme right parties will not be able to go to the, to, to the final elections. So we have two ways of seeing this. This being said, I am not entirely sure that what is happening or what has happened in the UK or in the US may have a tremendous impact on the way French people are going to vote next Sunday and how they are going to behave into the voting booth. Mm. And finally, before we go, I want to have a final word from uh, every one of your three. Uh, where do you think uh, people are going in terms of making their decisions? Which direction do you think France, as a result, is going? Ms. Gongwei Muhe, once again, a fortune-telling question. You have 30 seconds only. Well, I hope that they will vote against the extreme right. As I said, mm. this is um, going to be detrimental for our country, but also have very negative impact on, on Europe and, and the rest of Europe. Okay. Um, I'm a member of the Socialist Party, and therefore I don't agree and I don't approve with what Monsieur Fillon is presenting. I believe that this is going to be a very brutal um, program uh, on social issues and will bring instability. I in see. France. So I just hope that they will, um, they will, they will be wise and um, take the right, uh, make the right choice. Make the right choice, Mr. Tui. What's the right choice? <laughs> yes, it looks like uh, for the first round of the election, uh, uh, French people will try to have uh, emotional express. But maybe for the second round, I hope that hopefully there will be a rational de uh, decision. Because anyway, no matter who will be the next president, right. I, I, I mean, this election would be regarded a very, very big revolutionary change in the politics of France. And the second round, of course, is on early May. And finally, but last but certainly not least, Mr. Basgou, final words. Well, I do not have any crystal ball, which I wish to have. <laughs> uh, we are going to see next Sunday what is going to happen. I sincerely hope that the results of the first round will show that French voters do think that France is an ongoing country and that France is a country living mm. in its world, i.e. in Europe and in the world. That's my, uh, that's my hope, but we are going to see it on, mo on Sunday night. Yves Bascou, Alain de Ganvey-Mouret and Tsui Hongjian, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us. All the best. Thank you.